Hey everybody, Goose and Stradamis here, back again on another video, and this time I am going to be bringing you my Hall of Horrors ranking. Oh, yeah, I'm already calling the nasty, cruel fucking comments on this video, <laughs> because my first two takes for my bottom, number six and number five, these are books I genuinely will never read again because of how much I disenjoyed at least a large portion of them. Uh, I know I'm gonna get some insane hate, whether it be for comments or Discord messages, <laughs> or just, you know, people cringing at the side of this video, whether they say anything publicly or not. Uh, just, just fucking understand where I'm coming from. They didn't do anything for me, and they were all just kind of basic, uh, for, well, these bottom two at least. And some of the top ones I found more enjoyable because they had some things I like and prefer in Goosebumps, so... That, that out of, sorry, with that out of the way, I also have a quick message for you. Suck my cock. Let's fucking begin. Number six. Oh, are you pissed off yet? <gasps> mm -hmm. A motherfucker. I do not give a fuck if you like this book or not. I hate it. <laughs> And I don't even think it's, like, the worst Goosebumps book ever. It has some things I kind of liked thrown in there. I'll say this. The mystery is what drove it on. It, it, what kept me reading the book. It had a great mystery and some something more stronger than Goosebumps books have. Which was a lot of fucking things to choose from to believe in what the hell was the actual cause of Val Shrinking. Because this is a shrinking story. Big spoiler. Read the blurb. <laughs> Oh my god, besides that, which really helped the story out, this is a pile of shit. I'm gonna be completely fucking honest. This this is a really liked one, and I have absolutely no clue how. I, maybe it's a preferation thing, like they prefer types of wild stories, but this one was so dumb and wild, it just didn't do it for me. Well, let me give you a summary of this kid's life uh, currently. He's a magician, failing kind of, I don't know. Uh, and he has two girls who are probably simps, <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're probably madly in love with him. I'm fucking jealous, all right? I'm jealous of, I believe, Steven. Yeah, Steven. <laughs> but he also takes piano lessons, so I hope those aren't murder. And this piano teacher likes to make weird cookies, or he probably put some secret ingredient in. I have, I, I had some pretty weird thoughts of what that might be while <laughs> I was reading the book. So th there's also an added element of creepiness, like creepy old man uh, with little kid. That kind of <laughs> took some points off. I didn't really like how weird that felt, uh, that relationship between the two. For what little we got, there's also a dollhouse in this dude's house, like a whole fucking room full of, like a trilogy place set, you know, or Beetlejuice, yeah. And also, this kid has some weird ass parents, I believe are like, the botanist of the animal world or some shit like that. And uh, they're taking an uh, injured bird, so we have also, they have the squawker thrown in here. <laughs> oh God. And yeah, this that that's his kid's life summary. I might have missed something. If I did, I hope not, because it's already crazy enough. Plus later in the book, let's just say men in black. <laughs> Uh, we get some crazy authority, big my authority shit thrown in there. Um, yeah, it gets so fucking wild and dumb, and I hate the shrinking aspects of this book. It's all stereotype shit, and it's not done in a way I liked it. Like in Shrink Man, the Adventures of Shrink Man is not a Goosebumps book necessarily, but it, well, at least an advertised one. But it is the lost story of. The Incredible Shrinking 5th Grader, Series 1026, and I really liked that book, because I thought it did everything well, I thought it was a decent, well-written book. Maybe because I prefer it because the 90s one, but either way, this is not a good fucking shrinking story, and it's, the ending is also terrible. It, yeah, uh, it's it's pretty, pretty predictable, too. <coughs> Ooh, anyways, that was my opinion on that book, that burp really summarized it there. Number 5... Mm, you, if you weren't pissed off enough already. Now, my rating for the book, I will spoil this. 
is somewhere between 7 out of 10 and 5 out of 10. I'll give you that range if you want to really know what it is on my Goodreads account. It, I'm not being as harsh on this one as Night Giant Everything because it had more stuff I liked about it besides the mystery aspect of where the uh, where this claw came from. I'm not exploring the story, by the way. There is some great and disturbing imagery in the climax of the book. There's some nice uh, elements running. Oh, I look fucking ugly. Anyways, uh, I kind of like some of the characters in the book. Not the main character. He, he I, I liked him at first, but he kind of... No. <laughs> didn't get better throughout the book, I'll say that. And uh, it's also a very sportsy book, and I dreadfully hate sports. It is the most boring thing ever to read about. Yeah, I, I fucking hate reading about sports. It's the most boring pile of shit to read about for me, so... Yeah, there was also some enjoyment taken off from all the sports scenes we got in here. The book actually had a lot of issues, and it's gotten to the point where I really don't think I'll ever pick this book up again. It's like, to read it, of course. Well, I'm making it right now. Put it down. Oh, picked it up again. So I picked it up again, but I'm not fucking reading it. Alright? Never rereading this again. Ugh, sorry, it's disgusting. Yeah, this book has some rancid shit in here. The main character kind of turns into an asshole. Uh, the cover and title is a lie. Like, there's no claw getting up off this kid's neck and cutting a cake. The birthday party scene of No Return has barely anything to do with the book. I think it might have been thrown in after the book was published to Scholastic. Like, we need a title, dude. We need a scene for the title, too. After they came up with the title, like, throw this in, fucker. And Stein's like, okay, I'll change the plot. <laughs> Fuck you, Scholastic. Yeah, I think that's how it might have went down. But, uh, yeah, um, I do not like this one. It was a boring drag that was just fucking monkey's paw, if you know what you know. Yeah, monkey's paw pretty much summarizes why I hate this book so much. It's just, you, like, be careful what you wish for. But luck, it's annoying. I hated it. I disliked it a lot. And I'm not going to read this one ever again, but there's so much that brings up the score in the later parts of the book and throughout the book. I'm going to give it between 7 and 5 out of 10 because I haven't reviewed this one yet on the channel, but it still isn't one I recommend reading. Next up, Claws. I'm going to be pretty quick on this one because this is a pretty basic and standard book. Uh, basically, Cry of the Cat with Pet Cemetery. Bada boom! It's the same fucking book as Cry of the Cat, which kind of brings down the store for me, and that's why it's only fourth place on this list. Uh, originally, I would put it probably a little bit higher, at least a place higher, switched out with uh, my number three pick. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of degrown on me, and I think the ending also kind of sucks now, and there's a lot of stuff thrown in here uh, that's really just similar to Cry of the Cat, and stuff I just don't really like, uh, referring to the cat Bella on the cover. I have a cat named Tinker Bella Donna. Pretty coincidental. She's also a black cat. <sighs> yeah. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, this is kind of a forgettable one. Next up, The Five Mass of Dr. Scream. Now, this one. This one is pretty hard to forget. This had a lot going for it. It was a Halloween story to begin with, and I thought that was really cool. It had uh, a very interesting premise. It had a good setup. It had a great startup. And even a great ending. Which I thought was really creepy and disturbing. Uh, may or may not involve screaming. But, uh, the book kind of falls into a space known as formulaic. <laughs> and it is very basic, really structured. Uh, there's 20 page segments, roughly. Five of them referring to the five masks of Dr. Scream. All of them are just copy and paste. They change the environment, they change the monster. That's it for like a hundred pages and it gets really old uh not that they're terrible i just don't like it that much how formulaic it feels and just the same thing with new coat paint which isn't terrible that's what half the gooseless books are in the franchise it's just like it's just the same thing in one book five times it's kind of hard to like but i still found myself really enjoying the story here i didn't like the wolf thing if you know you know if you know me, you know, you know, <laughs> uh, furries. Anyways, 
uh, yeah, it was still a solid Halloween story, and it was definitely high stakes, too, and I really like high stakes stories. Moving on. Yeah, beat my ass, grab the whip, grab the belt. <laughs> yeah. This story is the fucking goat. I don't fucking care. This is second place, too. Well, my number one place is gonna be fairly agreeable, and I'm sure people won't beat my ass for that. This one, some people hate. Some people hate it. And I have no fucking clue why. I actually made a review recently for Triple Header Book 1 and 2. 1 and 2. I think those were literally my last two videos. And uh, Book 2 had a story called Ghoul School. Ghoul School is literally this in 40 pages. This is that in 130 pages with more uh, added fat that I really like. It's good fat, you know, unlike this. And uh, it's just a genuinely creepy, disgusting, and disturbing story with a lot of great zombie horror and a good plot. It's uh, overall kind of basic, like, oh, this kid needs to survive this zombie school. Pretty basic. It's still good. I kind of like it. And also has some added elements in there, like the Reviver, if you know what you know. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's also got decent characters. I like the main character, since he was a huge horror fan. And uh, there was also the side character of a girl who had a nice twist attached to her bow predictable, still good. And there's just a lot to like here. It's also a very well written story. And yeah, I have no clue why people dislike this one. It's just a really fucking good story and concept stretched to 140 pages. If you're awesomeness, yeah, it's a really fucking good story. I don't know why people dislike this one. Maybe it's suspending belief that these parents accidentally sent this kid to a zombie school. Minor spoiler, but it's in the first, like, ten fucking pages, so beat my ass. I don't know, but this next one is agreeable. Don't scream. My number one choice here, and it is a fucking... <laughs> it is a masterpiece, dude. Don't scream is basically the same thing as zombie school it's a great concept and it goes on for an entire book and you just get to fucking absorb all that for 120 plus pages because these things usually go to 140 these moderns yeah it's just that for 100 and like 30 40 pages it's so fucking good uh the concept of this book is basically killer phone and it is magnificent what Stein was able to pull off with this. There's some great horror. There's a great fret level. This phone is not to be fucked with. Uh, the only thing bringing this book down uh, is the ending. But still, it is still on top. <laughs> the ending is still bad, though. And that's the only nitpick with this. Uh, it has great scenes. It even has a potential break-in of a house. So that's also in there somewhere. Not gonna expand on that further for spoiler reasons. I don't wanna spoil this one too much. Uh, yeah, it's a really fucking good story. Plus, the characters are also good, too. But I don't really need to expand much on that conversation because Don't Screen's a very agreeable story. And I'll probably talk a lot more on the books I have not yet reviewed in my actual reviews for them. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this ranking video. I know some people probably are pissed off of where I put three of these at least, but. This is my opinion, and I'm glad if you like some of the books I hate, or and I'm upset if you don't like some of the books that I really like. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me your ranking below if you want. See you guys in the next one. Bye.